Hungry Gen, don't forget to subscribe. I believe when we encounter Jesus, when we met Jesus, we encounter him as a savior. But we cannot stay there. We need to grow. Uh, many people still love him to be a savior. And whatever they do, all the trouble, troubles they have, they always ask him to come and rescue them and help them and save them. But we need to grow. You can encounter him as a healer, but he's much more than healer. He delivered your life. He helps you, but he's much more than that. I believe first time Jesus came to this earth as a savior. But second time he's coming is a king. He's coming is a Lord. And the more we closer, uh, closest to the second coming of the Lord, the kingdom message will be revealed like never before. People will live that life. And I will talk about this more tomorrow. I want to invite everyone to join us in the internship. <laughs> I want to talk about my life, the way I live. The way I want to live more and grow in, to, that, um, to that lifestyle. And uh, I want to I I speak what God put in my heart this morning. If you can open with me Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Apostle Paul prayed for the church in Colossians. Verse 9, please follow me careful because I have not much time here but I mean because you guys have second service so he's praying and he said for this cause we also since the day we heard this don't stop praying and making requests for you he's praying for the church that you may be filled can you say with me filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding why the verse 10 he says that you may walk worthy can you say with me walk worthy i want to talk about this life a little bit when you walk when we talk about walking with god we what we are saying it's your lifestyle it's the way you live we're not talking about ministry wise we're just talking about life our path with God that you that you may walk worthy of the Lord to please him can you say with me please him in all respects bringing fruit in every good work and increasing say with me increasing in the knowledge of God 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 if you really want to be filled with his will you need to in you need to constantly to be increasing in the knowledge of God you have to always seek him amen so you know when I encountered Jesus in 2002, uh, I asked him, what do you want me to do? And the way he's answering me shocked my life. He said, I want you to seek my face. I said, for how long? <laughs> he said, to the last breath. And I get this serious. So I want to share with you, the more I'm seeking him and he is my priority, God is my witness. He is my priority in my life. The more I seek him, something is happening with my life. Can you say it with me? Increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God what I noticed the more I seek his faith face the more I'm increasing in the knowledge of God 
He changed my life. The way I see life. The way I see ministry. And I want to talk with you life that pleasing God. Bible says that we will live worthy of God. That we will live worthy. What kind of lifestyle is this? What kind of lifestyle is this that you live worthy of God? Pleasing Him in every way. Pleasing Him. And I saw a difference. The more, the more I seek His face, the more I'm growing in the knowledge of Him. I see transition from my ministry to His ministry. See, when you, he's allowed you to start, he's allowed you to start your ministry and, and it's okay. When you do everything for God, when, when you do everything in, in church and you do everything what pastor, pastor asks you to do. That's how it's supposed to be. That's the process of your growth. But the more you know him, the more he becomes your Lord. The moment when he have you, he can start his ministry on earth. There is a mystery of dominion. There is a, there is a, uh, the more I, the more I understand lordship, the easier my life here on earth. So there is a difference between pleasing God and serving God. There is a difference between pleasing God and serving God. So when you serve God, that's the way we start and it's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. The, the more we serve God, the more we're doing something for Him. But when we come to the place of Lordship, when He become your Lord, you want to please, he, he, that's the way you can please Him. Well, there is a difference between serving and pleasing. So when you're serving God, you're doing a lot of things for Him. But if you want to please God, you allowed Him to do it through you. And here's the difference. When you serve God, you can sacrifice so much. But when you obey God, when you want to please God, you are the sacrifice. Paul says, present your body for the living sacrifice. That's the way we please God. We allowed Him to do His ministry through us. He just needs you. He wants to have you. And uh, recently I taught the difference between spirituality and anointing. <laughs> The more I seek his face, the more I'm constantly increasing in the knowledge. I come to the point that I understand he doesn't need my ministry. He wants to do his ministry on earth. We pray your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So here is the thing. I want to talk about this shortly, this life that pleasing Him. How can we live this life worthy of God? You know, I have, a, I have my beautiful wife here and uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Wow. I, feel, I, feel, I feel you, I feel you. Uh, if she Leave in the house, ask me to wash the dishes. That's what I do. When I'm at home, I'm washing dishes and cleaning, clean the house. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm not home usually. <laughs> I'm traveling. I was like, yes, Lord, I will go where you want me to go. <laughs> but when she asked me to wash the dishes, 
And she left the house. She left the house. And I will start cleaning all the windows. Vacuum. I clean all the all the all, all I mean I clean everything in the, the house. I did everything except one thing. I did not wash the dishes. See, I serve her. I did so much for her. When she comes, I can talk about this. Look, I did this for you. I washed this for you. I, I did this for you. So I can do so much ministry, so many things for her, but except one thing, exactly what she wants me to do. So I serve her, but I did not please her. See, pleasing has something to do with obedience. And the more you grow, the more you grow, the more God can have you. He doesn't need your ministry. He wants to become your Lord where the Spirit of the Lord. So I can come, I mean, if she can come home, if she comes home and she asks me, did you do what I asked you to do? And this is what I noticed. This is from the, my own experience, you know. I can do everything for her. But the things that she asked me to do, I, I didn't do it. So when she comes, for some reason she didn't see everything I done it for her. Because that's not where her attention is. In her desire, in her, in her heart was one thing. Can you please do what I ask you to do? That's why when prophet came to Saul, he said, what's that? And Saul told the prophet and he said, I got this to bring sacrifice. I got this for the ministry. This is for God, your God. He said, don't you think that sacrifice for God more important than obedience? Of course not. So, Paul says that you will be filled with the will of God and walk worthy of the Lord. Please Him in all respects and growing in the knowledge of God in the Acts, Acts chapter 13 verse 22 Bible says when he had removed him he's talking about Bible says about the soul he raised up David to be the king to whom he also testified can you imagine God testified for David I have found David the son of Jesse a man after my heart David says in Acts chapter 2 verse 25, for David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. And God in chapter 13 we see God testify about David. See in Acts chapter 2 David says concerning him but in Acts chapter 13 God He's saying about David, he said, I found a man after my heart. God was in his attention always. And Bible says, and I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart. Who will do? Can you say with me, who will do? God was sure about his life. He will do all my will. That's the David that says in Psalm 23, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He takes me to lush pastures to heal me to refresh, refreshing water. He restores my strength. He leads me down to right paths for the sake of his reputation when he become your lord he's responsible for your life 
Yes, when he become your Lord, he's responsible for your life because now everything what he is doing, he's doing for his own reputation. So when he become your Lord, you lack nothing. See, in kingdom life, when he's your Lord, doesn't mean you have more than anybody. You have less needs than anybody. See, when we talk about needs, we don't talk about finances only. Because you can have finance, but, but you're still dealing with your sicknesses. You have a need in your life. That's, you, that's where you need His power and Lordship and His dominion. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Everything, when He is your Lord, everything He does, He's doing for His own reputation. This is powerful. I will talk about this tomorrow, the whole day. How to live that life when He becomes your Lord. There is a transition from, on, from your life to His life through you. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I lack nothing. So what stopped me from that lifestyle? I, 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 I saw that in Luke chapter 6 verse 46. If you don't mind, open with me. Luke 6 46. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord and don't do what I tell you? This is what I realize. You can call him Lord as much as you can. But it doesn't mean he's your Lord. So we come and we cry out and we say, Oh Lord, save me. Oh Lord, help me. Oh Lord, whatever troubles we have in life, we start crying to God. We, we say, Oh Lord. But it doesn't mean he's your Lord. Why? He gave us explanation. The next verse, Jesus says, Everyone, can you say it with me? Everyone, Everyone. Who, comes to me, who comes to me, that's my first point. So everyone who comes to me, that's what we call prayer. See, he's available for everyone. Everyone can come to him and call upon his name. So Jesus said, everyone who comes to me. That's what we call prayer. So if you come to him and you pray, it doesn't mean he's your Lord. He, he can be your savior, yes. He can be your healer, yes. He can be your redeemer, yes, but he's not your Lord. Because when he become your Lord, you will pray differently. When he become your Lord, Bible says, I will lack nothing. I lack nothing. You can measure this in your life. I do this with my life. I'm very serious about my life. I measure my life. I, I'm a... Uh, Examine my life, yeah, if I can say this. I, I'm examining my prayers, what I'm praying for. There is much more that I cannot explain. See, we are rejoicing when we hear testimonies about healing and it's good. But he heals for what? What next? 
We, we, we are rejoicing when God saves people. That's awesome. We call this revival. But there is much more that God wants to do here on earth that than just revive people, than just heal people. There is a, there is a, there is a will of God on, her, on the earth. Bible says, let your kingdom come. That, that, that God will establish his kingdom. See, at the end of that prayer, we pray, your kingdom is a result your power and your glory forever and ever see in the beginning we pray let your kingdom come and then all those other stuff and then at the end we declare now we see that your kingdom your power and your glory there is much more than, than, than healings and, and, and deliverance and this is so powerful and I love this but I believe Holy Spirit has a mission on this earth. Holy Spirit has a mission, has something to do through His sons on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus, Jesus said, everyone who comes to me, that's just the beginning. This is just the beginning. This is something that we have to do constantly, but for what? We are praying for what? What's the purpose in prayer? What's the purpose when I come to him? I can pray as much as I can but even though through that life or my prayers he still so he cannot be my Lord unless something will come out from that prayer everyone who comes to me I, I don't want to waste time but let me tell you something I recognize I, I saw that in my life the purpose of my prayer is his voice his voice is the priority in my prayer life not the clock so a lot of, lots of people they ask me how much you are praying or how much do I have to pray I said let me answer this I, I said to them pray to the moment when God will be in your mind always Pray, live that life that all you think, you think about Him. And this is not a joke. This is the real stuff. When He's in your mind, you will be careful how you say things. When He's in your mind, you will be careful the way you're acting with people. When He's in your mind, you will be careful the way you walk on earth. The way you do things. Why? Because everything what you do is coming out from the fear of the Lord. He's in your mind always. yes yes when God in your mind you think about him all the time that's worship when you think about 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 him that's the worthy life your life will be changed the moment the moment you stop focusing on him the moment you stop seeking his face your face will be on your ministry yeah, you will care about your ministry more than God, more than just to please in Him. That's another topic. So the second thing Jesus said. So first He said, everyone who comes to me, that's what we call prayer. Then He said, and here's my word. That's where the problem we have. Ah, uh, Tavoso. Oh, we've been feeding people with the word of God. 
people are seeking the Lord and come I, I received that from the Lord and I received this from God and God spoke to me and visit me in my dream and give me a vision and blah 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 we God, God yeah God speaks to us and God gave us his word but doesn't mean he's your Lord it doesn't mean he's your Lord The more you hear his word and do nothing, that's where the problem we have. So we have so much, so many people that are very spiritual, but they are not available for God. The more I see God, the more I dwell with him. I dwell with what with one purpose I want to please him and become available for God that he can count on me he can count on me anytime and anywhere when people always ask me wherever I go are you ready to preach are you ready to minister to be honest I always reply no I never ready no matter how much I read, how much I pray, I feel like I'm never ready, but I am always available for Him. That's where the anointing is. God anoints those people who is available for him, for him. That he can trust them. He can, he, can, he, can, he can count on them. He can tell them what to do. And they will not think twice. They will say, yes, Lord. So I understood. The more you walk in obedience, the more you are dying for yourself. You're dying for yourself because now it's not because it's not because of you it's not because of your desires your whatever you want to the way you feel the way people think about you no that I understood the more I am with him the more he delivers me from everything that stops me from his will on earth through my life has that stops me from my purpose in this life but then the third thing he said so when you come to him and you pray he can still be yourself a savior and a lot of people they love that they want to live like that every time every year And then you hear my word that's powerful that's good but it doesn't mean he's your Lord that but the moment you put that word into practice you open heaven upon your life you allowed him to step in through that word are you with me you allowed him to be a lord you allowed him to do his ministry now because that word came out from his heart that word came out from his will his desires when he says something to you and you obey if you think this is easy you're wrong it's easy to do one time but I am talking about worth the life. I'm talking about lifestyle. I'm not talking about ministry for God. I'm talking about when God is doing ministry through you, when your life become a platform for the Holy Spirit to move on this earth. When you obey, when you put that word into practice. Let me share something with you and I will end it. Let me share one illustration from my life. Do I have time a little bit? Uh, I remember one time I, uh, I went to Mexico. How many of you have been in Mexico? Uh, yes. And uh, we were there to do healing ministry. And uh, we came to one 
large church and uh, I start preaching there doing my sermons and then in the middle of my sermon one lady stood and started walking to me and I was still preaching I was still preaching and I see she's holding her baby and with the baby is she's coming to me and then she came to the platform she stood in front of me and she's crying weeping holding that baby and she started asking me for something and uh, I asked my interpreter David I said what does she want and he said she said that she feels that God in this place I was like wow that's powerful I don't feel anything right now <laughs> I'm just <laughs> preaching you know I usually uh, I'm preparing myself for the end because God comes only at the end you know <laughs> Holy Spirit move at the end and uh, I'm waiting for that moment to catch that moment I know how the anointing works uh, but she came to me and interrupt me and I felt like Holy Spirit finished already <laughs> inside of me but I'm still was I'm still preaching I'm but he's finished and she was more spiritual than I am so she came to me and she said please pray for me I thought maybe she has stomach problem or <laughs> headache or back pain what else but she said no 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 pray for my baby I said what's wrong with your baby uh, no no first she said please pray for me I said yes I will at the end she said no I want you to pray now I said no 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 this is not the right atmosphere right now everybody is listening to me and everybody is sitting there is they, they will see everything they pay attention to me now they are watching me and and she's in front of me with the baby on her arm and I said what's wrong with your baby she said she wasn't able to move her arm she born like this with the muscles problem so her right hand right arm was just like this she couldn't move anything uh, she, she she cannot do anything with that arm <sighs> I said my God my God my God I ha I, 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 I have see in that moment I got a need I have a need I'm in the moment in my life where I have a need. Are you with me? I need God. My ministry end right there. In that moment. I have a need. I ask everybody to, to stand stretch their hands and I said God inside of me I said God I'm honest with you that's what happened with my life I said God uh, it's easier to pray when everybody pray when everybody is busy with their own problems but now they are watching me and I told him I've been dealing with this all my life I have no time to share all the things that is happening now what I'm dealing with but in that moment I said God I am yours Holy Spirit you can have me only you can deal with this this is too hard for me I am yours I have no feelings I just have your word inside of me I've been coming to you 
thousands and thousands upon thousands hours your word dwell inside to me but right now I have a need I am yours I'm releasing your word upon the shell and I command from Mark chapter 16 I lay my hands on the child and I command that sickness to leave that body and when I was still praying everybody starts shouting everybody start jumping and shouting and I opened my eyes because I got scared what's happening there and if everybody starts screaming there and David was screaming too my interpreter guy he was screaming loud uh, in my ear I said David what is going on he said did you see this I said seeing what he said did you see the child I said what I don't see anything I just hear this sound everywhere he said that baby hug her mother with that arm when it happened you can feel God atmosphere was energized faith was walking in that place you know I, I was like oh oh that's my God that's my Lord but that I am I'm writing my second book right now it's called big God I'm, I'm, I want to share all my supernatural experience with God to build faith in people's life people need to see what God is doing are doing right now on the earth not the devil our faith is there when we grow it in the knowledge of God when we're chasing God with all of our life so I was there and I can feel that faith was walking among us and then suddenly one grandpa stepped out from from the crowd and he was paralyzed after the car accident he couldn't move his ha hands and hand and his legs he was walking like a robot to me or like this and he's coming and I'm watching him and he's coming he's coming to me he was going to me but now I can <sighs> I feel the anointing I feel the power of the Holy Ghost I feel faith and he came to me and he stretched his hand like this and showed me like because he couldn't move his arm so he's like I was like because I I don't speak Spanish and I was like come on listen to this and I was about to pray for that guy I do not know how to explain this I'm sure many of you experienced this more than me but I was about to lay my hand and it seems like my life pause paused and I hear the voice in my mind do not pray the way you are about to pray for him I was like what <laughs> inside I've, I've been dealing this I've been have this conversation inside of me in a second I'm telling you my my life was paused in that moment and I can hear this voice I want you to hit that guy I said in the mighty name of Jesus <laughs> you are a thief you come to steal and kill and destroy you still in my faith now you killing that guy and you will destroy my ministry I'm telling you I was like no way this is not God and I'm about to pray second time same thing like I could not move he said no you want me to be your Lord 
because I've been praying about this. This is what I'm preaching shortly. That's my life. This is it's all about in, in my life. And I've been having exams, you know, all the time in different spheres. And now I'm in this situation and he said, you want me to be your Lord? Do what I ask you to do. I said, I cannot hit this old man. He's paralyzed. I'm going to kill him. He's going to die in front of me. You know, in those moments, you are dying for yourself. In those moments, believe me, you are losing your reputation because God says everything He does, He's doing for His own reputation. It's not about your name. It's not about your name. It's about His name. Allowed Him to step in in that situation. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this, sit down please. So I'm there. And I'm fighting with myself. I'm fighting like crazy. I was like, no way, I cannot do this. God, please ask me something else. I cannot hit this guy. He's old, he's paralyzed. And you said, lay hands. I want to lay hands. He said, nah, no, it's not about... Uh, just do what I ask you to do. And a third time, I ask, I start telling everyone I said please I don't care what you're gonna think about me but I hear his voice in my ear and he wants me to hit this guy <laughs> everybody starts laughing start started laughing like you right now except that guy <laughs> because he he's the one who will be hit But then God showed up. He saved, he saved me in that situation. He said, I will reveal myself to you now as a savior. Through that old man, because that old man gave me permission. He said, come on. It's like, this is easy. If God says to you, just do it. I'm telling you, he gave me permission to hit him. I was relieved, like, oh God, thank you. This is perfect. But the second problem, I don't know how to hit him now. So I'm thinking I will do from the right hand because my right hand was stronger. But then no, I will do from the left hand. God says, do it straight. Just do it straight. God is my witness. The whole team was with me. They can confirm that. And I was like, are you ready? You're like, And he fell down even when he fell down my biggest mistakes that any uh, none of none of our people was behind him because he fell down and you know that voice that you can hear like BAM and I was like oh man I should put somebody you know behind him he fell down and I see he's dead he stopped breathing, closed his eyes, and when he was falling down, the whole crowd did this, <laughs> and all of them stopped breathing too. Now everyone just watching that guy, nobody is breathing, they just, uh. and I did the same. my god there is so many thoughts was passing by the whole you know that moments when your life just through the pictures from the childhood you know in front of your eyes like you see all your mistakes in life and and I'm, the first thought came to me i thought this is the will of god for him to die i mean he's all paralyzed and he was suffering so much and <laughs> i'm telling you god was like you know it's time to go home i will use my sermon servant I will use my servant he will help me to help you <laughs> he stopped breathing I am telling you in front of God there is a moments in life when you believe in rapture there is a moments in life when you're ready for rapture 
you, you, you even start like start jumping like God please come <laughs> rupture right now <laughs> that was the moment in my life because that old man is laying in front of me dead everybody is watching I'm this in that moment where I, I that's not comfortable you know I lost my comfort zone in that moment and I know that I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this what's gonna happen next you ready for rupture I start jumping like God please come I'm ready I fulfill your will one minute it doesn't move two minutes three minutes everybody's watching and I'm standing like I don't know I just did what I supposed to do he asked me I I had a need I stepped out from my comfort zone in those moments you're dying for yourself for your reputation you just present your body for God to step in and to do for his own sake and the fourth minute first what happened that old man opened his eyes my God I was so excited to see those eyes He opened his eyes and the second thing he did he started smiling and I, I was smiling with him like come on man how you feel but the third thing he started running on the bicycle he started moving his hands and his legs he couldn't do that before he started moving he was laying on the floor and he started moving like this I said you are ready to step out we stretch our hands we pick him up and that guy was running for 45 minutes and I was running with him I was running with him I was running with him he was running because God show up as a Lord and I was running because God saved me God saved me God saved me hallelujah Oh, Come on, pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in the Holy Ghost. Shanda ya broso to koma ambre se tere mahaidia. Shando robo bobo sondea. Shabra baba basata lehende. Robo shaka brasata. Ribo bobo sanda lere haya robo shia. Ora basate ya la brosete. Compra bobo shahanda rabosata. Shikende ya rabrosa. Rihanda la rabo sotoria, shabro bobo soto humble, shihanda la rabo saya. Present your body, present your body as a living sacrifice. It's time to move forward. It's time to grow. It's time to grow. Where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. Shabro bobo bobo sanda le rihaya. We make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, by God, that is you. We make miracle work, promise Listen, 
disobedience close heaven upon your life it happened in in the beginning will disconnect you will disconnect from his lordship in your life when you disobey but every time when you obey you allow him you will open heaven upon yourself see many of you you come into the secret place or you come and you pray and you ask God to do something he said I already I already done everything now is your choice I already gave you a word what did you do with that word for some of you God spoke and he said you this is your family you must be part of this local church but you're still fighting you fighting with your future you fighting with your blessing you fighting with your purpose see that moment of appearance will actuate his lordship and his presence in your life and 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 you will lack nothing that 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 moment of obedience for some of you God spoke to you for many for a long time to sacrifice something he spoke to you to give something but you're still fighting I'm praying that this local church as a body listen to this that's my prayer I'm praying that this local church in the body of Christ as a body will present that this body will be available not only individual but as a body as a local church will be available for heaven come to earth through your obedience come on raise your hand say God I am yours have me all my body is your body renew my mind come on talk to him present yourself present yourself and if God spoke to you something before just do it now do it now do it now do it today forgive bless restore relationship whatever he spoke to you to do do it today this is your day when you will allow him to step in in your situation come on just present your body present your life say God I want to live life that will be worthy of you that you will be pleased with me that you can testify about my life at the end that I found a man who is uh, who, who is after my heart who will be who did everything who did everything what I ask him to do on earth come on worship him and give him praise worship him and talk to him and present your body thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come